What is up, YouTube? Mitt was two of you here back again. Got some new signage up. I don't know if you guys ever saw that, but uh, put those up. But today I wanted to do, or tonight rather, I wanted to do a video that um, kind of, it's more of a personal video, I guess, if you will, um, to kind of give you guys some insight to my logic behind why I have what I have and all of that. It's kind of a, it's a personal video. Um, so I'm going to kind of, I'm going to try to make this into a 15 minute video. So hopefully you guys watch the entire thing. Cause if you do, we're going to go through all of this. We're going to go through that and that and not in depth, but just enough to kind of give you a taste of why. So you see on top, you see all the sockets and you see the little toolboxes and, you know, all the little knickknacks and all the junk on top. You can see I'm trying to get other things taken care of, broken ratchets and things of that nature. You know, so lots of stuff going on. And I'm just going to peruse through real quick. And there's a reason for that. So you guys see all the socket jars, you know, there's stuff piled up on top of each other. Try to go real quick. Various socket drawers, screwdrivers, and there's stuff on top of stuff, on top of stuff, you know. And this is not a showing off video. There's a method behind why I'm showing you guys all of this. <clears throat> stuff falling over there. Socket jar. Punch sets, ch punch and chisel sets, um, more Mac chisels and all that kind of stuff, you know. You know, you guys, the guys that follow me, you guys know what I have already. This is just probably for more people who don't follow me. You know, sets on top of sets on top of sets. Can't even get to all of that, but master set there, more sets here, sets back there, all the impacts and ratchets and all that good stuff. Then we come around to the primary side. Uh, you guys seen all the ratchet drawer, probably one of the most photographed drawers on social media. <clears throat> Wrench drawers here. You guys know about the mother-in-law wrenches there. A lot of you guys helped out to make that happen. More wrenches here. It's in a, it's in a macro tray, but these are all snap-on. They're just, I like the macro tray better than I do the snap-on tray. So um, for the size of box, it works perfectly. We got a lot more to go. Oh, my. oh man, spilt my water. That's great. Pliers, picks, holes, clamps, you know. You know, I put a post on Facebook last night. People were like, oh man, you, don't, you need more sockets. You have more ratchets than you do sockets. I'm like, not really. Because <laughs> I got a lot of sockets. This is, the, you already saw the other side. This is the, this is the primary side, but. I got lots of sockets. <laughs> I'm not hurting for sockets. I guess I probably should have done a better job showing off the pictures. Uh-oh, that one's stuck. Let's see if I can get that one. There we go. I really can't get in there. This is, but you know, there's, you know, clamps, my Mac tools. Everything in this box is Fairly, it's pretty much snap on and Mac. Okay, everything on top of the box, same thing. Okay, different various test kits or not test kits, but uh, other specialized kits for coolant refills and all that kind of stuff. Brake bleeder kits and Dremels and these flexible mats and all that kind of stuff. It's a method to the madness. More ratchets and stuff down here. Cheap icon sockets. Um, I finally figured out how to operate this thing. I, my guy Jerry had this, and I know it's an extendable pry bar, 
And I was like, how does this thing operate? And then I saw that little button there. And then I realized, bam, <laughs> that's convenient. So now I know how it operates, but I did not know before, and it's got these little push buttons here too, so you can bring it back in, but I did not know before realizing that that's how you do it. So, you know, shame on me, I guess, for not not knowing, but I, yeah, I made that my own. I said, oh, okay, I could use that. I thought it didn't work at first, and I wasn't about to try a warranty that would snap on. <laughs> I'm tired of that crap. All right, you see up here, Matco Silver Eagle one. It's a reason why I'm showing you guys all this, I promise you. You know, great matic all that stuff, snap-on sockets and stuff like that. <sighs> Remember this set here. You know, all the Matco Mac stuff. Okay. Okay, that's the Matco. That's probably the most expensive wrench set in the drawer. Everything else is fairly cheap. More pliers, more bit sets, and this is a Cornwell. I don't know if I ever showed you guys this. It's a Cornwell set here, swivels. You know, 8 to 24. Okay. Hammers and scrapers and various hex and torques and Mac rule, rule lock restore, uh, remover kits, Mac cope, um, trim panel kit, um, holes installer or removers, um, brake caliper press and but wheel lock sockets and bit sets and all that kind of stuff. You guys know all my stuff. This is video is purposeful. I want to knock on my gas can there. Okay. Various sockets and impacts and all that kind of good stuff. You know, more kits down there and whatnot. Torque wrenches. Okay. And then... Okay. Let's see if I can slide this over. Uh, Got to remove the plate. Sometimes I end up eating out here. <clears throat> That's my son's screwdriver, not mine. Various pliers. I picked these up the other day. These are snap-on. Where does it say that? Can you guys see that? Yeah. It says snap-on there. I was trying to clean them up. Boy, these things were so rusty. And uh, this is what they look like now. But the reason why I grabbed them is because although they had surface rust on them, let's see if I can get that in there. That's about the gist of the rust. That's what it looked like all over the pair of pliers, and I cleaned that up. But the teeth were tremendously nice. So my guess is this is like the tradition, you know, the issue with snap-on pliers. They rust out really quickly. I don't know why that is, but um, they won't rust out any no more now. I got them cleaned up. Various pliers, you know, sockets and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I got more sockets and ratchets and screwdrivers and hex and torques and all that kind of stuff over there. All right, so, all right, the purpose of this video is to say, guys, you guys seen all my tools, right? You see all the tools that I got in both of my boxes. You see all my auxiliary stuff that I've got, um, you know, the stuff that I take with me on the road and whatnot for jobs. And I, you know, you post, you show people what you got, you know, you kind of show off your setup because you're proud of it. You spent the money, you're happy. And then people always question, you know, oh, you spent too much money or, um, you know, this, that, and the other. You know, the, the, the typical comments that you get, people are either jealous or they are they think you truly did spend too much money or whatever the case may be. But, you know, looking at, you know, what things cost, right? Um, the box was $50. Okay, that's what I paid for this box here. I know it, it's all fixed up and pretty now, but I paid 50 bucks for this thing and I restored it personally over the course of a year. Things like the Ulsa Tools trays and all that kind of stuff were given to me by Ulsa Tools. You remember I told you guys to remember these here, these Nepros ratchets, these were given to me by Nepros. Um, everything else, uh, and oh, and there, there was a set of Capri, um, well, no, let me think here for a second. No, Capri is never, oh yes they have, sorry, 
Capri did send me something. Capri sent me a set of these ratcheting wrenches. That's the gist of all. Oh, and one last thing, one last thing, one last thing. This set of um, bulletproof wrenches. That's the gist of everything I've ever gotten free from tool vendors, tool manufacturers. Okay. The majority of everything else has been purchased through me. And my total investment, investment, I would, this is purely an estimate. I would say with the Matco Jamestown 773 box, the Snap-on KR562A, and all of the sockets and ratchets and all of that in there, I would say my investment is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about three grand. That's a total investment. For every tool that I own, it's about $3,000. Um, Everything was bought at unbelievably low pricing. Even this box here was bought really, really, really cheap because it had sat in my dealer's garage for a long time before he was able to sell it and move it over to me. So I got a great deal on this guy, right? This box here, I literally drug it out of a barn. Like you talk about barn finds. This was literally driven, dr um, drug out of a barn, loaded on the back of a F-150 and, and hauled an hour and a half back to my house for the rest for the tear down cleanup and restoration process um all the ratchets and stuff in my drawer and now this this toolbox has been giving me some issues too i gotta check my my lock situation there but um all these ratchets man you know some of them are brand new yeah but what happened is a lot of them i had to get replaced or warranted or updated or something like that fact and a lot of them are old they've just been cleaned up really nicely and polished um but i bought I don't I've never bought a snap on that's not true. I have bought one. This is the only if I can get it to show This is the only snap on ratchet that I've ever purchased in my life off a tool truck And um for a snap on tool truck that is and this one here was purchased a, a, a subscriber and a good friend of mine um, Got this got me to hook up and um, I'm just gonna go by his first name John So John hooked me up and he said hey he was getting one and I told him I wanted one, and he hooked it up and got it sent to me. I paid for it, of course, but he picked it up from his dealer because I don't have access to a dealer. Um, sorry, my kids are being loud in the house. I'm not understanding what that's all about. But anyway, um, all these ratchets were purchased used, uh, with the exception of that one. The only ratchets that were purchased new in this box, and I'll show you guys, uh, the Matco. So one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight Matco ratchets were purchased new. Uh, oh, nine, sorry, this one, little one here. Um, the Proto was uh, given to me. The Carlisle was given to me. Um, oh, and my mother, bought, my mom bought me this one for my birthday last year. She bought me a ratchet. She knew I wanted a Mac ratchet and she, uh, went with me on the Mac tool truck, uh, that is, and we got that for my birthday. So thanks. Shout out to my mom for that. Um, but other than that, everything else has been purchased by me. Um, they, my kids are being crazy in there. Um, I'm going to make this real short because something's going on in the house. I got to figure that out. But anyway, just to let you guys know, the total investment, like I said, is around three grand. The total value is probably a neighborhood of 15, maybe 20 grand. I don't know. Um, this, you know, this, a, a high estimate. I don't know what it's worth, but I'm just trying to show you guys that, Hey, you can buy great tools. You don't have to break the bank. You don't have to go in debt to do it. Um, this is a, just a quick video to let you guys know that uh, it's a little bit of a secret, I guess, in, in terms of like what I'm all about. I buy these things really cheap. I you know, make awesome deals. I try to, I scour, I scour, I scour. So I don't buy something until I got a great deal on it. And then we go from there. So there's a more than enough people trying to sell tools out there. So there's a more than enough opportunity to buy things for cheap. My investment is very, very minimal in comparison to what I've got. I've got a little toolbox full of stuff over there. I've got more stuff over there. I've got welders and plasma cutters and all this other kind of stuff. I got everything I need in my garage and I bought everything conservatively priced. Um, and I had, you know, that, I had done it for a reason. I mean, I've, I'm a man with six kids, guys. I got six kids, like four daughters and two sons. 
So uh, I'm not out there throwing cash around, but just wanted to let you guys know just a little bit of a secret about what I've got invested versus what I feel that the value is. Maybe you think the value is more, maybe you think the value is less. Leave it in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to hear some of your thoughts. Um, but yeah, we were able to do this, right? And we were able to have some of the highest quality tool manufacturers in my box, in both of my boxes, that is. And uh, even my little creeper cart there, a tool truck um, um, seat there, has great tools inside of it, with the exception of some, maybe some of the other sockets and stuff. But uh, nonetheless, you know, great tools for the for the money. And um, and yeah, I don't have to use my tools every day. That's another comment I always get. Well, man, your tools aren't dirty. Like, okay, dirt doesn't give you street cred. It doesn't make you a better mechanic if your hands are dirty. Um, I mean, I've seen some crackhead mechanics that were as dirty as the ground you walk on, and it didn't make, make them any better of a mechanic or any worse. Probably worse, more than likely. Um, but uh, I'm not a mechanic. I tell you guys that each and every time we talk about tools, I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, I design what most people use, put it that way. That's a good way to look at it. So um, I don't need to be out here tinkering around with the tools and uh, every day. I do projects as they come about, projects to help people out, projects on my own vehicles, things of that nature. But um, it's not my livelihood. It's not what I do day in, day out. A lot of the things that you guys see on here is just content for you guys. So if I find a great deal on something, I take it, you know, I, I buy it. I tell you guys about it. I clean it up. I service it. And I let you guys know how I found it and what, what I think about it. Uh, a lot of you guys have purchased stuff from me. I've sold more ratchets than I than I own. Literally sold more ratchets than what I own. Um, I've you know I've sat around and had four or five ratchets go uh, in a matter of thirty minutes. That's how many orders have come in in thirty minutes. So I just get in the move. I just want to sell some things off, and uh, I've invested and in, to do that and uh, to bring value and opportunity to you guys. So. Um, it helps, you know, helps the community out. You know, if I can give a guy a ratchet for, you know, half the price of what he would pay off the tool truck, um, you know, th I'm going to do it time and time again. I'm going to do it. If a guy wants wrenches or screwdrivers or, or chisel, punch and chisel sets, and I can get it for him really, really cheap, then I'm going to do it. And you know, it doesn't hurt me. I'm not needing it. I'm not hoarding it. I'm not in need of it. So I'm going to pass that savings on. So it's just a little bit about me, a little bit about my channel. And uh, primarily, I do this as a hobby, just to kind of show you guys what I got, and just to kind of try to try to inspire you guys to get out there and look for stuff, look for better deals. Um, don't be beholden to tool trucks um, going on there every day or every once a week buying up a bunch of stuff that um, ultimately you don't probably end up using all the time, right? Um, a lot of these things, some of the things you see, I won't point them all out, but a lot of the things you see, people have pawned. Um, I've, I've frequented pawn shops a lot and bought awesome tools. So um, a lot of times, you know, you got to be able to liquidate it. And that's another important point. And I'll end it on that. Your tools is, a, is, a, is an investment, right? People, most mechanics and technicians that I talk to say that their tools is an investment. It helps them make their livelihood, put food on the table, etc. So therefore, you have to you have to treat them that as, as such. You don't beat up on your investment. You don't ruin your investment. You take care of your investment. It's like your house and your car, um, you know, your family. Hell, I mean, that they're all investments. You invest in your family. You make sure that they're well taken care of. They're well fed. They're protected. And in hopes of one day being able to see those kids grow up and make something of themselves and know that you've done a good job as a parent. You know, you buy a house, you own it. Maybe you stay in it for the rest of your life. Maybe you decide to sell. But what you don't do is trash it and tear it down and break it up uh, to the point where you can't make see a return on your investment. Um, same thing goes for your tools. You know, you buy these tools. You say, I'm going to have them. Someday you're going to be too old to wrench and, you know, you're not going to need quite as much. And so you're going to liquidate it. Maybe you'll give it to your your kids and That'll be a to return up. That'd be an investment into your children in their, in their future. Um, maybe you'd say, "I don't have kids. I'm just gonna sell it off and take a trip, or you know, put it aside for retirement." You know, it's it's an investment, and uh, you, I, I refer to it as liquidity. Right? It's it's it's, li it's liquidatable, meaning that you can you should be able to have it, and then if you need to liquidate it, you can liquidate it and get some form of uh, return on your investment. Uh, and you may, you know, you may buy a socket set for 150 bucks, but you only may make 80 or 90 of it back. Uh, that's the difference in buying Icon and Harbor Freight and 
all these other lower tool brands, you know, you don't get your money back on those, right? You get your money back on buying high quality tools because there's a, still an investment there. So um, look at your tools as liquid. Um, it's an asset. They're 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 liquid. They're, they're liquid uh, investments. So in terms of having to um, come up with a lot of money, maybe you don't have it. Uh, and you have a bunch of tools you don't use, you can liquidate those tools and, and, and make some money back on them. So uh, treat them as such. Don't don't just treat your stuff like it's you know nothing and it means nothing and you're just going to beat the hell out of it and then one day you'll just hop back on the tool truck and make another investment. That's a really stupid way to look at things. It's not how it works. Um, tool manufacturers don't want you hopping on trucks all the time buying, warranting out, warranting out, warranting out. They don't want you doing that. Um, you know, it, it costs them money as well. So um, you're going to buy it, use it right, you're going to protect your investment, and then hopefully that investment makes you money over time. So I know that's a rant. I know. Jesus, 20 minutes. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Look at your look at your tools, look at your box, look at everything that you own as investment. And if, in, if shit hits the fan and you have to make money back, you want to make sure that you've invested in yourself wisely, that you've taken care of your investment and that you're able to liquidate said investment and make some form of money back to take care of what you need for the next chapter in your life. All right, guys, that's a little bit about me. That's a little bit more about the channel. I don't even know where it was going with all of it, but that's what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you will, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have more stuff coming out, making more investments. So uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you click that bell so you'll be notified when I drop new stuff. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Midwest underscore tool underscore review. And uh, as always, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. All right.